before the gun, before the horse, before metal tools crossed the ocean. Indigenous peoples across North America faced a daily riddle, how to feed entire communities when game ran faster than humans, hid deeper than arrows could reach, or swam beyond the grasp of nets. The answer lies in one word, design. They turned landscapes into hunting partners. Cliffs became traps, rivers were used as corrals, and gravity became a weapon. These improvisations were not made out of desperation. The people engineered systems and refined them over millennia, allowing nature itself to do the work. On the windswept edges of the northern plains, Blackfoot hunters gathered at the rim of a canyon. Below, a herd of bison grazed, unaware. For weeks, the tribe had prepared by building low stone cairns in two lines that stretched for miles, narrowing toward the cliff. Young runners, draped in wolf pelts, crept close to the herd. Then they stood. They howled. The bison bolted. Funneled between the cairns, the herd gained speed, momentum, carrying them forward until the ground vanished beneath their hooves. Dozens plunged over the edge. Their weight crushing those below, breaking bones on impact. Warriors at the base finished what gravity began. A single jump could yield enough meat, hide, and sinew to sustain the band through winter. Nothing was wasted. Every part found purpose. The hunt was preceded by prayer, followed by a feast. It was coordinated, efficient, and sacred. But not every landscape offered cliffs. On the flat prairies of Wyoming, where pronghorn antelope ran too fast to chase, hunters dug deep into the earth itself. They studied game trails, noting where animals walked daily to water. There, they carved pits, lining some with sharpened stakes, then covered them with branches and grass until the trap disappeared into the ground. The antelope, following its routine, stepped where it always had and fell. The pit required no strength, no speed, only patience and knowledge of where the animal would be. In the boreal forests, where thick cover hid foxes and martens, another trap waited in the shadows. A heavy log, balanced on a delicate wooden trigger, bait, which was a scrap of fat attached to a bit of entrails, hung from the stick, and when the animal tugged, the trigger gave way. The log fell, and the kill was instant. Hunters could set dozens of these along trap lines, turning the forest into a network of silent sentries. Elders taught that a quick death was both practical and respectful. Because the animal was sacrificing its life, it was only normal that the hunter showed it mercy. Smaller game demanded subtler craft. Along rabbit runs and bird roosts, 
Hunters wove loops of plant fiber or sinew and placed them where animals passed without thinking. A gap in the brush, a tunnel through tall grass. The loop was invisible until the animal stepped through. Some snares were tied to bent saplings that would spring upward, hoisting the catch off the ground. A trapper could run lines of thirty or forty snares, each one hunting while the trapper slept. The method required no strength, only intimacy with the land and the creatures moving through it. Where forest met water, the logic shifted again. Along the Klamath River, the Yurok people spent ten days building a lattice fence across the current. Fifty days of ceremony preceded the construction, and this ceremony included prayers, songs, and preparation. When the weir was finally stretched from bank to bank, it funneled migrating salmon into reed baskets at narrow openings. Entire villages harvested enough fish to smoke and store for the year. In the Appalachian streams, Cherokee families piled stones into V-shaped walls, then waded in, splashing and herding panicked fish toward the apex where cone traps waited. Early European observers reported hauls of 300 fish at once. The abundance was celebrated with feasts, dances, and gratitude. And when the run was strong, tribes removed the weir early, ensuring the river would give again next season. Across plains, forests, and rivers, the pattern remains the same. Different people, different landscapes, same solution. Turn observation into architecture, guide prey into confined spaces, and leave the rest to momentum, gravity, and current. These traps were proof that they understood the environment and that creativity and restraint could coexist. The smartest hunters didn't fight nature. They learned its language and built with it. <laughs> 